Dogs do not see in black and white. They do actually see in colors, just not the full color spectrum us humans see. Basically, they see in shades of blue and yellow, and colors like green or red are very hard for them to pick up. If you've ever thrown a toy for your dog and you're playing with him, maybe a tennis ball on the grass, and you just go, oh my god, my dog is so blind, how can he not see this toy? Well, we gotta look at it through the dog's eyes. A lot of the time, the dog toys blend in with the surroundings. Just like us humans can have a dominant hand, left or right, so can dogs. Or dominant paw, I should say. Dogs do actually exhibit a paw preference. What you'll find is that about a third of dogs favor their left paw, Another third favor their right, and the last third, eh, they can kind of go either way. Now, how can we tell which paw is our dog's dominant paw? Well, we do something called a stabilization test, where we take a toy and we put food into it, and then we give it to the dog, and then we observe, and we watch, and we see which foot does the dog use to hold and stabilize the toy. And if you repeat this test multiple times and keep observing, and you'll see that same pattern of the dog always using the same foot to stabilize, then we know that's our dog's dominant foot. The way dogs poop was a little bit more complicated than you might think. If you've ever wondered why when a dog goes to poop first, they gotta smell, spin in circles, make sure it's just the right spot, it's because they actually align themselves with the magnetic field of the earth. Now we don't know exactly why dogs do this, but when they do poop, they always face either north or south. Dogs do not poop east to west. A dog's sense of smell is about a thousand times better than us humans. Imagine we were to walk into the kitchen, right? And we smell a nice apple pie, actually a cherry pie. I like cherry pie. We smell a nice delicious cherry pie. Oh, that smells so good to us humans. As far as the scent goes, that is the extent of what we can tell. Oh, that is a cherry pie. To a dog's nose though, it is an entirely different experience. They don't just smell the pie. They could detect each ingredient used to make it. The type of cherries we use, the specific spices we put in there, and even the individual layers of the pie. They could even pick up on scents that we're not even aware of. Maybe we spilled a little flour on the counter, we spilled a little sugar on the floor. Their nose would pick up all of that. Us humans can smell food, the dog can smell the recipe. The same way all of us humans have unique fingerprints. The same thing goes for dogs, except in their case, it's about their nose. Every single dog has a very unique nose print. No two dogs have the same one. Nose prints are a great way to uniquely identify dogs, and they're so good, in fact, that ever since 1938, the Canadian Kennel Club actually uses them and accepts nose prints as proof to identify dogs. Where do humans sweat when we get hot? Our armpits, our forehead maybe, maybe other places, who knows? When dogs get hot and dogs sweat, they do it through one place and one place only, and that's their paws. Dogs have something called mirocrine glands in their paws. And those glands are what sweat and produces a very small amount of moisture that helps to keep dogs cool when they get too hot. Now dog sweat has a very distinct smell. If you've ever smelt your dog's paws and they kind of smell like corn chips almost or some kind of corn product, it's actually a sign of the dog's paws sweating. One thing you can do to reduce the odor is actually keep the hair in between the paw pads trimmed. Now keep in mind also that a dog that has sweaty paws can also be a sign of severe stress or anxiety. So if that's the case, then we need to do with a little training. A dog's tail is made up of several vertebrae that's directly connected to their spine, which means if you ever pull a dog's tail, you are going to cause them tremendous amounts of pain. For us humans, it's the equivalent of someone literally grabbing your ear, your arm, or some part of your body, and just pulling. It hurts. Don't ever pull a dog's tail. There's hundreds of different breeds of dogs, and of all those dogs, there's actually about eight different types of tails. First, we have the curled tail, which we usually see with pugs or a does, and the little tail that kind of curves over the dog's back. Next, we have saber tails. We see this kind of tail on Siberian Huskies or Malamutes. It's a saber-like tail. It's kind of carried in a sickle curve. Bobtail tails are seen on Australian Shepherds or Old English Sheepdogs, and just a naturally short, tiny little nub. Some dogs like Labrador Retrievers and Golden Retrievers have straight tails, which are just straight, thick, kind of can be described as an otter tail. We have whip tails, which are seen on greyhounds and Italian greyhounds. These tails are long and slender and basically whip-like. Tightly coiled tails, we see these on Shiba Inus, where it's a really tight tail held over the dog's back. Feather tails you'll find on Cocker Spaniels or Irish Setters, and they're long, super covered in fur. And last but not least, corkscrew tails, which we see on bulldogs or maybe Pomeranians. So there is a lot of different kinds of tails. There's no such thing as a guilty dog. When you see those videos of the dogs looking 
guilty and the owner's saying, oh, my dog knows exactly what he did. They don't. As smart as dogs are, they don't have the capacity to understand morality. So whenever you see a dog that's, we call them guilty, what's actually happening is the dog is fearful. The dog is afraid because our tone of voice changes, our body posture changes, and they know that historically, whenever that tone in our body posture comes out, they're gonna get in trouble. They don't actually know what they did or why we're angry, they just know we're angry about something. Dog P, which I know this is gonna sound weird, is actually pretty fascinating. Whenever we think about how dogs communicate, we think about body language, we think about vocalization, barking and whining, but urine is actually a way that dogs communicate. When one dog smells another dog's urine, they can tell so much about that dog. They can tell things like how old the dog was, whether the dog was male or female, even whether or not the dog was spayed or neutered. There's a very good reason why dogs have wet noses. This is part of why dogs have such good smelling, because that wet nose helps to absorb scent chemicals. If you ever see a dog smelling and then often licking their nose, what they're doing with that wet nose and by licking it is transferring those scent chemicals to their mouth for further analysis. Now a dog with a dry nose is not always a bad thing, but sometimes it can be a sign of a dog that is either dehydrated or has a fever. So always keep context in mind. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. A dog's hearing abilities, once they're fully developed, it allows them to hear about four times more than us humans can. They also can hear much higher pitched sounds, sounds that for us are impossible to hear. The physical makeup of dog's ears is actually really cool as well because they have 18 different muscles where we only have six. If you ever see a dog when they're trying to listen, they actually can move their ears so nice. I know some humans can move their ears as well, but it's nothing compared to a dog. Whenever someone says, oh my God, my dog is barking for no reason. One of the things that always pops into my mind is I wonder if the no reason is actually something the dog is hearing. It could be either blocks away or it's just a sound that's a uh, much higher pitch that we're not able to pick up on. And that's what's triggering the dog to bark. When puppies are born, they are born blind and deaf and without teeth. They don't got a lot going on. Their only way of exploring the world is through touch and smell. It takes roughly two weeks for their eyes to start to open and then to be able to actually see what's going on around them. If you're ever gonna get a puppy from a breeder, it's really important to ask about what type of socialization did those puppies get from the time they were born up until eight weeks? Because that is a very critical time period where we need to be exposing the puppies to lots of different sounds and smells and touches to make sure that when they're an adult dog, they're not gonna have any fears. The way your dog sleeps has a lot of different meanings, whether that's on their back, completely flat, or all curled up. Dogs know it's very important to keep their neck and their stomach protected because those are very sensitive areas. So oftentimes when a dog is kind of maybe not sure about the area they're sleeping in or has a little bit of stress or anxiety, they'll sleep curled up to protect those spots. If you wanna learn about what other dog sleep positions mean, I have a whole video on it. I'll put a link in the description. What is the most popular dog name worldwide? I'll give you three seconds to think. The answer? My dog's name, Max. Now you can name a dog whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. But shorter names tend to be easier for dogs to respond to. Just something to keep in mind. How many eyelids do you think dogs have? Well, the answer is three. Just like us humans, they got the upper and the lower eyelid, but they have a third one called the nictitating membrane. If you've ever seen your dog laying around and sleeping, kind of half asleep maybe, you see that weird pink thing go over their eye. And that's the third eyelid. That membrane then helps clear debris and mucus from the dog's eye. Of all the countries in the world, the United States has the highest population of dogs per capita. Almost 38% of households in America have a dog. And when we add up all those dogs, we're close to 77 million dogs in people's houses. What country is number two? France. Research has shown that dog's cognitive ability is roughly equal to a two-year-old, a smart two-year-old. This is why dogs are able to learn words and phrases, pick up on patterns. Dogs are very smart. My favorite thing about dogs is the just undying loyalty they have to us humans. If you treat them right, they give you unconditional love without expecting anything back. No other animal has the kind of bond that dogs have with us humans. That unconditional love and empathy and just emotion they can provide to us humans compared to other animals, they're unmatched. 